Welcome to the point in the course where we finally get to migrate our embedded CSS uh, to be ex external CSS, which truly, truly you will see the power. If you haven't, I'm guessing some of you have probably already started exploring this, um, and you've heard me talk before you know, about the power of external CSS, but now I'm going to specifically show you how to do it. So I'm going to walk you through each and every step of this. Often this is a uh, confusing part for students because you've been you know going along the way building your term project with all of your various CSS embedded uh, so just sit back and I'm going to show you specifically how to get this done so in this video we're going to review the differences between inline and embedded and external CSS and we're then we're going to talk about can we have all three uh, can we have all three perhaps for our term project do most people use all three when they're designing and developing web pages we're going to chat uh, about hierarchy and um, because you know some of these uh, can affect one another, some of these can prevent one another from, from doing what they're designed to do. And we're going to chat a little bit about the order of specification. Uh, this isn't uh, a CSS class. All I'm supposed to do is just kind of give you a broad overview of CSS. There's so much more that you can learn in terms of CSS and other courses within our certificate get into that more. So I'm just going to kind of set those courses up by just getting into a little bit about the order of specification in this video. And then finally, we're going to just talk about the advantage of externalizing our CSS. Uh, we chatted about that already a little bit, and you've even done that a little bit in some of your homework, just practice with it. But I'm just going to just kind of remind us about the advantage of doing that and why we need to do it for our term project. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to migrate our um, embedded CSS that you might be working on uh, from your term project and migrate those to be embedded CSS, uh, to be external CSS. So let's take a look at inline, embedded, and external CSS and discuss their differences. So this is basically a review for all of us, but basically inline is best used sparingly. That's if we just want to just do a quick change on a page. And um, if we wanted that change to be made often on a specific page, then what you'd want to do is you'd want to embed it up in the header. And then if that if that specific style or if that if that specific design was something that you wanted to be site-wide, that's when external comes into play, and that's when you should want to make sure that you put that um, style that you want to affect on many pages um, to be in an external style sheet. So this is an inline style that would basically turn um, a specific group, of, a specific line of text, perhaps it would turn it red. It would make sure that it is of the Arial font, and then it would also give it make sure that it's the size of 24 pixels. Now remember, this is inline, so if you wanted to use this multiple times, you would actually have to have this code in all of the different areas of the page that you wanted this to be affected, this to take effect, um, which is why then we would rather, if you were to do want something like that, it'd be best to do it embedded like we have here. For example, in this case, every paragraph on the page would have that color red, would be the font family Arial, and then it would have uh, the size of 24 pixels. Now let's say that we wanted this to be affected on this to take effect on many pages. Then what we would need to do is that we would need to migrate it to an external CSS and then we would take basically that style that we had embedded and we would migrate it to this main.css page that's then linked on any page within our site that we would want those styles to take effect. So then if we were ever to need to update um, from our font to from Arial to perhaps Times New Roman, all that we would need to do is make that change on our main CSS page, and then all of the pages that link to that page would reflect that change. So now a common question that you might have is, well, can we have all three? Should we have all three? Should we have inline styles, embedded styles, and external styles? That really depends on the needs of the site. Just as you've heard me say that, you know, our sites are made for our users and their needs and what they need to do and if we're not meeting their needs then essentially they're going to leave well they kind of the, the rule still kind of it applies to what we're doing in terms of coding as well um, the needs of our site might be that you might have to have you know maybe just one inline style on one page and then maybe you have one specific page in your site that you might think you know you want to have some special styles just for this page and you don't need to put that site-wide you know, so that might be a situation where you would have all three. So if we do have all three, now we need to understand the concept of hierarchy. Because if we do have all three of these within a site, hierarchy is very important for us to understand because sometimes, uh, like 
as we're playing spades, you know, some things do trump other things, and we want to make sure that our site renders appropriately. The best way to do that is just to remember what the C in CSS stands for. It's called cascading style sheets for a reason, because essentially all of these different styles cascade and affect one another. So as I state here, the term cascading refers to the order of importance the browser should follow when it encounters conflicting rules. So for example, we might have rules that are on our external style sheet that affect you know, globally the whole site, and then drill down perhaps to a specific page. And even on a specific page, you might have some specific styles that perhaps would trump some styles on the external style sheet. And then even you might even get even more specific on one specific page within this hierarchy. You might have a specific style that just might affect a photo or just might affect perhaps a link or maybe a group of text. So what we end up having is inline styles overriding embedded or external styles or in instance trumping. And then we might have embedded styles overriding external styles and then even um, you could essentially have, like sometimes we have pages that have two external style sheets or even, like I think we've looked at Amazon's site that has two or three different external style sheets. The style sheet that's essentially closest to the content would overwrite the other external style sheets if there are multiple. Now I don't want to get too technical because like I said earlier, you know, some of, uh, this isn't a CSS class. You can have multiple classes on CSS. There's multiple books that are just written on CSS. So this is just, this class is just a broad overview, but then to get even more specific, in a sense, we do have an order of specification. So that's where we have things like classes and IDs. As I state here, for example, we might have a class called cats, which could affect all the elements where this class was attached. So let's say we had um, a group of, uh, uh, of content, for example, that we wanted to give all this this class called cats, and then we wanted to give them all specific styles. So that would essentially uh, affect all of the elements that we've given the class called cats. Now we can even get even more specific, and we can have an ID called dogs. Now the tricky thing about IDs is that an ID, as your book discusses, can only affect uh, one element. So in a sense, as you can see, this an ID is more specific than a class. So in a sense, we have this order of specification. So this is pretty obvious. We can kind of tell that the ID in this case is more specific than the class attribute cats. The ID dogs, which is written, you know, hashtag dogs, and the class attribute uh, dot cats, because uh, the dot cats would affect all of the elements, like I was talking earlier, all of the elements with the cats class attribute would be affected. Although dogs is a little bit more specific because it's only affecting the one, um, the one element that we've attached the ID dogs. That's the only one that would be affected. Where it gets a little bit more confusing is when we can have these contextual classes within classes. So your book gets into this later on in the CSS, later on at the end of it when it gets into more advanced CSS. But order specification gets a little bit more confusing when we have these contextual classes. So for example, um, with the, if we just had a class selector, we would just affect all of the H1 elements that have been assigned the cats class. And as I state there, the H2 elements with the cats class would not be selected. That sounds, okay, I can get that, pretty understandable. But then we can basically have these child selectors, or some people call them descendant selectors. I believe your book calls it a descendant selector, where all of the H1 elements within the cats class would be selected. It's a little bit different than the, just the traditional class selector, because what you would have is, let's, let me give you an example. For example, let's say you had an, an, an absolute position div called cats. Then within that div, you'd have other content that would be styled. Maybe you have h1 elements within there. That's where this would come in because that is essentially within the absolute position, absolute position div called cats. So all of the h1 elements within the div cats would be selected. And then please forgive me if this is going to confuse you even more, but we also have pseudo class selectors where all of the, for example here, all of the h1 elements will have a special effect of Tom within the cats class if they meet specific criteria. 
So to make a confusing slide less confusing, all you, read in, all you really need to know at this point is um, future classes within the Web Design Development Certificate are going to be getting into order this order of specification even more in depth than what I'm going here for here now. All I'm trying to do is just give you a broad overview and even your book just barely touches on it but I just wanted to give you just a little bit of a background. For our purposes in this class I'm guessing you're just going to be using uh, simple class attributes and perhaps even some ID attributes but I'm guessing that some of you are following along with your book and some of you did go through and watch all of Bill's Linda videos within the essential XHTML, HTML, and CSS. Um, but again, for our purposes, you know, ID attributes are more specific than class attributes. And just as a reminder, just in case you've forgotten, there's an advantage to having your styles controlled by an external style sheet, which is why that is a required aspect of your term project. While external style sheets are less specific in terms of just the basic hierarchy, they are very powerful because with an external style sheet, as I've said before, you have the ability to just change that one rule on that external CSS page, and that will affect every single page in your site that that page is linked. So like if, for example, like let's say Amazon was changing their color palette from yellow to blue, you could just make that change on one external style sheet and then all of their thousands of pages on their site instantly that link to that external CSS would reflect that change. So instead of having to go on all of those millions of pages on Amazon's website and change all of their embedded CSS from being yellow to blue, that one change could be made in an external style sheet, which is why we need to take, because I'm guessing some of you perhaps have been developing your term project in terms of just having some embedded styles uh, within your website on each of your pages. You know, and honestly, since our sites are actually pretty small, most of our sites in our class are only going to be maybe five or six pages. Uh, you're only really actually required to have five pages on your website. Um, it's really not that difficult to go on each, all five of those pages and just change that one style that you're trying to, to change. But this is, you know, I want to make sure that you understand, you know, the power of external CSS and the advantage of just having it all in one spot. So that's why you are required to have an external style sheet for your term project. So what we need, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to migrate those embedded styles with my HIO website to being um, on an external style sheet. So I'm just going to open up my folder and I'm going to open it up with. Um, Notepad++, and as you can see here, I have these embedded styles here at the top of my page that affect just the visual design of this one page. So what I want to do is I want to be able to pull these out and put them in an external style sheet. So what I can do is I can copy them, and I can go up here and create a new file, and I can paste them in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to file, save as, and I'm going to save it as a CSS page. So you can find it here by going to the save file type as cascading, st cascading style sheet file CSS. So select it, and I'm going to label it main. But I almost forgot I want to make sure I save that within my include folder. So now I have my main CSS page saved within my main within my include folder. So basically, the my higher my organization system of my site now is here's all of my main pages, here's my image directory, and here's my include directory. And inside my include directory, I have my main.css. So now I have my external style sheet ready to use and link in on all of my pages on my site. So these are all of my pages. Let's take a look at them, how they look currently with their embedded style sheet, so we can just kind of compare once we get it linked in. So in Firefox, this is how it looks like with an embedded style sheet. We can right click, we can view the source, we can see that these are in fact embedded here on that page. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull those out and link in, link them in using external CSS. So what I can do is I can bring up Notepad++ and here is my page. So what I do is I can take these out because we're going to be linking them in. We can take them out. We actually don't even need the uh, the style element, and this is the element, this is what we do need to link it in. So we're just going to write, open it up, link, space, href, html reference, equals, quotations, 
and then you have to give the path of where your style sheet is located. Remember, mine is in the include directory, so incl forward slash main dot css in quotations space relative equals quotations style sheet close quotations space then you have to give it a type equals quotations text forward slash css and then you have to end it make sure you're ending it with the appropriate forward slash that's an error that a lot of students get sometimes and you're gonna hit save so now I can come over here and I can refresh my browser for some reason it looks like some of my um, visual design on my page is not loading for example you know we do see all of this what we don't actually see is the background image so what I'm guessing has happened let's check and see so look at my main CSS for here's my index page here's my main CSS on my main CSS you'll notice that my link for my background image is still here but what's happened is since I have my main CSS within my directory let me bring up my directory within this include folder the path to this link has essentially changed so to do that I have to navigate remember because all an image it all all we're doing is we're just coding like essentially a window to see the image so we have to navigate the browser to where that image is so you can see it through the window so you have to do just this is just for me for my case if you're not using images within your CSS then this won't be a problem for you but I did because I wanted to do as much in CSS as I possibly could because if maybe I want to go in and change my background image one of these days it's all controlled with CSS so then I just have to make that change on one page but as I migrated it's important to note that my path did change so I have to put in the forward slash but then I had to tell it to go outside of that folder so I have to tell it to go outside of the folder with these two dots forward slash and into the images folder and then that's where the image is located so I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna come back here and refresh my page and voila I have my background image so now my task is how do I get um, basically now I want to put make sure that my external style sheet is linked on all of my pages well to do that what I can do is I can just open up so I don't even need this anymore so I can actually close this but now what I want to do is I just need to make sure this link is on all of my pages because I don't want some of my pages to be using embedded and some of my pages to be using external so I can go over here and I can open up my about page in notepad plus plus and I can essentially remove all of this and paste hit save I can go to my characters page open a notepad plus plus paste save open up my contact page open with notepad plus plus paste save and then I have one more page open with notepad plus plus paste save so now I'm going to refresh my browser so now I'm going to all of these pages and they're all using that external style sheet if you think I'm incorrect what we can do is we can right click view the page source no that I'm sorry that was viewing the image right click and view page source and you can see there's that link that's linking to that style sheet so now if let's say I wanted to make a change on that style sheet so for example what I can do is I can open reopen my style sheet and let's say I wanted to change um, hmm let's see what if I wanted to change this my h2 remember my h2 on my page is let me show you my h2 my h2 currently is this blue let's say we wanted to change it to black to make it easier on us so I'm going to open it up in Notepad++ and I'm going to write black. Hit save, refresh my page, and now it's black. And it's also black on all of my other pages where the H2 is used. So I hope you see the power in having an external CSS control the visual design of my page because, you know, maybe eventually 
I might want to change my background image. Instead of changing that background image on every single page where that's embedded, I just had to change it on my external page, and then it would be used on all of my pages. So let the class I know if you have any questions with migrating your embedded CSS to external and linking them in, because that's what we're here for. And good luck the rest of this week, and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.